Five. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is your boy, Five Piece, producer and engineer extraordinaire. And I'm checking in with a super quick lesson, a really simple lesson as well, but one that deserves a little bit of coverage. A lot of people, when they're recording, they deal with latency issues. Latency is when you talk into a mic, for example, or play on a keyboard, and there's a delay between when you say something or play something, and it actually gets executed on the DAW side. Now, I want to talk about the different ways you could set up your buffer size within your DAW, regardless of what DAW you're using. I'm using Pro Tools, but I'm going to talk about the different ways you could set your buffer size and how this will affect what you're trying to do and ultimately give you some guidelines on how to set it based on what you're trying to do, whether it's recording or mixing. So I'm going to jump into Pro Tools for a second and just show you some back end stuff. But what I'm doing here is applicable to every DAW. Every DAW has this. You just need to go usually into your preferences and adjust something called the buffer size. Now I'm going to bring my mic into frame for a second because I'm going to need this to show you the point. Blah out. So right now, if I go into my Pro Tools and I go to Setup and I go to Playback Engine, this is going to show you my current audio interface, which is a Universal Audio Apollo. And you can see here it says HW buffer size. And I have it set to 1024 samples. This is a relatively high buffer size. If I pull open the list, some DAWs have higher limits. I believe if you're on a PC, you can go even higher than where I am. I'm on a Mac, um, but I have about 1024 buffer size. Now, if I keep it on this and I record enable my record track in my template and I talk it to it, you're gonna see there's a delay. Yes, hello. You can hear there's a little bit of a delay between when I'm saying something and when it's actually heard. So I'm going to undo this. Now, this is not ideal. If I'm recording a track, uh, I want to be able to hear my vocal on time. Because not only am I not hearing it on time, but it's recording it off time. And this is going to be problematic. That means you as the engineer, if you are the engineer, you're going to have to do things, you know, cut the, the wave and move it over. and. Basically, you're creating a huge margin for error. You're probably not going to get it perfect, you know? And not only that, it's an annoying experience. Most artists, they'll like to hear themselves when they're recording, and if they can't hear themselves properly, they don't know if they're delivering things properly, and they want to ultimately know how that final product is going to sound. So obviously, having this latency is not ideal. And not only is this latency applying right now to the microphone, but this would be happening if I was playing on a MIDI keyboard as well, if I'm a producer trying to produce some beats. It's also going to be doing the exact same thing, and that's not ideal. So what I would do is I would go to my playback engine, and I would greatly reduce my buffer size. You have to play with this to see what's going to work best for you. But in my experience, usually 128 or 256, somewhere between here, uh, is usually pretty decent to start and help mitigating this latency problem. So when I'm recording, I'm usually on 128 samples. All right. Now when I put this on and I re-engage my mic, hello. My name is Jeff. Actually, it's not. It's five piece. You get the point. You can see that now I'm actually saying things and they're coming out perfectly in time and everything is great. All right. So we want to make sure that we have a low buffer size, essentially, when we're recording. By having a low buffer size, we're going to reduce latency and we're going to get everything on time like we'd like. Right. Now, the only catch is by having a low buffer size, you're not going to be able to have as many plugins. Once you start having too many plugins in your session, EQs and auto tunes and compressors and all kinds of stuff, your session is going to greatly, you know, bog down and stop working properly. So you have to be careful that with a low buffer size, you're going to have to be aware that you can't really be going crazy with the plugins. Really what's going to be the catch here is you're not going to be able to mix. You're not going to be able to mix with a low buffer size. If you have a low buffer size and you try mixing, you're going to be getting clicks and pops and crashing and all kinds of stuff. So what do you do when you're mixing? You have a high buffer size. And this is, a, this is important because when you're mixing, you don't really care about performance necessarily. You're not really playing anything. You're not recording anything. You're going to be just literally listening and making sure things sound as best as they can. So you can actually afford to have a little bit of latency while you're doing this. So once again, the general rule is if you're recording vocals or a MIDI part or whatever, have a low buffer size. This will reduce the latency but allow you to get things on time. And then when you're done recording and you're moving into the mixing phase of things, uh, you can increase your buffer size and have a high one. I usually try to cap it out as high as I can, like I showed you in Pro Tools here with my setup. 1024 was the ticket. 
Um, if it can go higher than that, you can go higher than that. But just understand that the higher you go, it is going to create a little bit of latency and that might just affect your playhead a little bit. You might see things appearing at a slightly different time. It may not appear right in the time that it should be. However, it's all playing back in the time that it should be. And most importantly, it's going to let you actually use a lot of these plugins that you're going to need when you're mixing. So very simple tip, you know, super quick. Hopefully uh, this one doesn't go over your head, but definitely don't sleep on this one. Make sure you set your buffer size accordingly based on what you're trying to do. Low buffer size when you're recording, high buffer size when you're mixing, mastering, etc. And uh, yeah, I hope that helps you guys. If you guys got value out of this, please share it with your friends, producer friends, artist friends, engineer friends, anybody you think who doesn't know this or maybe they're just starting to work with digital audio. Uh, I know this was helpful for me once I figured it out, so I hope the same for you. But yeah, I'll see you later, guys. Peace out. Five.